We've seen the GPU that NVIDIA doesn't want to admit is real. Lord of the Rings TV show is going to cost half a billion dollars for one season and flight on another planet. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet here today on April 20th. It's 420, everybody. So grab your hi-hats and play some drums because we're going to get into the fact that we now have seen giant boxes of the RTX 3080 Ti, which has not even been confirmed by NVIDIA at this point. But according to the shipping boxes that was posted by a leaker over on Facebook, we can see that the MSI Ventus here, the RTX 3080 Ti version, is in a giant pallet waiting to be shipped with a bunch of other cards like the RX 580 as well as the GT 710. Beautiful stuff. I'm so glad that the GT 710 is shipping in 2021, the RX 580 as well. Just, it's a great year to have those cards. In case you're not up to speed on the RTX 3080 Ti, it is essentially the RTX 3090 with cut down video memory. We're expecting it to have roughly 12 gigabytes of VRAM, whereas the RTX 3090 has 24. So half the amount of VRAM, slightly fewer CUDA cores, a lot more than the RTX 3080, and expect it to be around the $1,000 mark. Obviously take that with a massive grain of whatever condiment you like because the price is dictated by the market and the market says screw you in the face. But our community has been asking us to bring back one of our sponsors that we had for a long time. So instead of me saying screw you into the face, we decided to go get that sponsor again, which is Synergy, my friends. Today's episode of Hot News is brought to you by Synergy. And if you haven't heard of them before, they're the application that allows you to control multiple computers with one set of keyboard and mice. Keyboards and mice? Keyboards and mouses. You only need one, so I don't know why I'm pluralizing it. You download Synergy, you share one mouse and keyboard, you simply move your mouse between your computers effortlessly, you can copy and paste between computers, it works on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Raspberry Pi, you only need an internet connection, no special hardware, nothing. So whether you have a work PC and a home PC if you're working from home, or if you have multiple PCs that you're working on all the time like I do, Synergy is invaluable for making it so simple that you only need one setup and you don't have to multiply how many ever things you want. You don't need an expensive KVM switch. It's amazing. Check them out at the link in the video description. It's $29 for a lifetime license with them. It's $39 in case you need the pro version with SSL encryption, but Synergy is great. Our audience has been asking for it over on Discord multiple times within the last couple of weeks. People have been bringing it up, and so I'm glad that they're sponsoring us again. Check them out. But while we have gotten wind of the RTX 3080, the UK has gotten wind of NVIDIA trying to buy out ARM. That's a thing that was happening for $40 billion. And they say, hey, stop. We need to investigate for national security reasons, according to UK saying, I have today issued an intervention notice on national security grounds. That's coming from the digital secretary, Oliver Dowden, saying the UK's independent commission authority will now prepare a report on the implications of the transaction, which will help inform any further decisions. Okay, it might be a national security risk. NVIDIA can't trust them. American companies, pfft, NVIDIA came out and said, we do not believe that this transaction poses any material national security issues. We will continue to work closely with British authorities as we have done since the announcement of this deal. Yeah, that's what I expect you'd say, NVIDIA. What trade circuits you bring to the American government, huh? And while it might not have been a national security concern, it certainly concerned a lot of people. Sony announced previously that it was gonna be shutting down the source for the PS3, the PSP, and the PS Vita, shutting them down later this year. However, they have now reversed course on that, saying that the PS3 and PS Vita storefronts will stay open for the foreseeable future, but the PSP store is still gonna shut down because if you're still on a PSP, you should be, feel sad for yourself. Go to the PS Vita. However, that doesn't mean that you can't download anything. If you still have stuff in the cloud, I guess, on the PSP store, you can download it. You just can't buy any future games on that platform. So while Sony announced that it was gonna shut something down and then brought it back to life, Amazon is now killing a project that was supposed to be part of life. Amazon's Lord of the Rings MMO game is being shut down. This game was being developed with Tencent and according to them, they couldn't come to a agreement of how they wanted the MMO to be made. So the MMO is kiboshed, dead, gone. He ruins it. I mean, especially after the Amazon Game Studio game that came out, which I can't really remember what it was called. 
Crucible? Is that what he's got? That, I mean, such a lackluster reception. I don't necessarily trust that they were going to do a good job with that game. But while the game is shut down, the TV show is absolutely moving forward. And according to some reports, it's going to cost $465 million for the first season of the show, which is absolutely insane. The New Zealand's Minister for Economic Development and Tourism said that this would be the largest television series ever made, which is absolutely absurd. We knew it was going to be expensive after it was announced that Amazon was spending $250 million on the rights to this. But just for comparison's sake, Game of Thrones final season cost $90 million. Disney spent around $100 million on The Mandalorian. WandaVision from Disney Plus was right around $225 million. Half of what Amazon is spending on the Lord of the Rings series. And I just want to mention for a second that I don't trust this. this. This is my opinion speaking here, but Amazon is spending half a billion dollars on a known project. Obviously, the Lord of the Rings movies were a huge success. Peter Jackson did a great job of adapting them to the box office. But what sort of reasoning do they have for an existing franchise that's already beloved that they're somehow gonna tell the story in a different enough way, in a unique enough way to draw in half a billion dollars worth of viewership on their Amazon Prime streaming platform to be able to do that? Cause that doesn't sound right to me. I mean, I get like, I might watch it, but I already know the story. It was already told in an immaculate way, unless you're gonna make Tom Bombadil super thrilling and I will regret the day that Peter Jackson decided not to put him into the movie. You don't have much going for like drawing me in Amazon, but rumors are drawing people in when it comes to the sale of Square Enix. It was announced last week, according to a Bloomberg report that Square Enix might've been going up for sale. Square Enix came out and said, no, so that's the end of that story. Microsoft's xCloud is coming out on iOS and PC today, so you can start streaming on those platforms with the beta there. And speaking of rumors that got squashed, Vesa came out and said that the Display HDR 2000 certification that we've been seeing on fake products on Taobao isn't real. That's not a thing. However realistic that image may look, we don't have an HDR 2000 certification, so disregard that. That could be true, it could be that they're hiding it, who knows? That's the fun stuff with rumors. What's not a rumor is that Apex Legends is going on mobile. Every battle royale has to have a mobile client and every crypto has to see the day where it's ruined. Let's talk about the GameStop Bitcoin update. Bitcoin having a really rough day, down to $56,000. In case you don't remember, it was at like $65,000 this time last week. I don't know if it was exactly a week ago, but it has crashed quite considerably. You see over the weekend, it had a really rough time. Cat catastrophically jumping off a cliff from 61,000 all the way down to $54,000 before the bleeding stopped. It was rough. GameStop not having as much of a rough time, currently up 6.5% on the day. When is it gonna moon? That's the question that I always have with GameStop, but don't you worry, SpaceX is going to the moon because it's been confirmed that NASA is gonna partner with them on the lunar lander with an uncrewed flight as well as a crewed one, which is excited for the Artemis program, SpaceX getting that contract. But what's more exciting than going back to the moon is, I mean, Okay, they're equal in excitement. I don't, I don't wanna disregard that, but flight has now happened on another planet. NASA's Ingenuity helicopter station on Mars actually flew for about 30 seconds where it hovered 10 feet off of the Martian surface, marking the first time that we've achieved flight on another planet as a species, which is absolutely crazy considering the fact that the Martian atmosphere is way less than the Earth's atmosphere. So actually getting a helicopter to work on that planet was a huge engineering task Task, but they did it. Let's just all give a hand to NASA and their Mars team because that's amazing. And do you remember when flights happened for the first time? That was with the Wright brothers back in 1903. So I hear Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, something like that. I'll tell you what, Chrome remembers, Chrome Memories now coming to your browser. This is currently still in beta, but Chrome Memories apparently gonna be the new way to do history. Instead of showing you everything that you looked at on a given day, it's just gonna give you the top things, probably things you spent most time on, you went back to frequently, you know, the highest priority things in your life. Memory is now gonna be there. But speaking of web browser updates, Microsoft Edge getting a performance mode that's been rolled out into beta. It's gonna make so that your CPU is better, your memory is better, your battery usage is better. Microsoft performance mode coming to take 
Chrome and make that just a memory. Remember when you used to use Chrome Kids? No, it's now Microsoft Edge is cool. Remember when you used to use Clubhouse? Well, turns out that the app was actually just a feature that could be implemented on every single social media app on known to man. Reddit Talk is now the latest Clubhouse competitor being rolled out where you talk together on Reddit. Twitter Spaces, a whole bunch of other ones have adopted this as well. Audi adopting more electric vehicles. The A6 e-tron concept being unveiled is supposed to come out in the latter half of 2022 with over 400 miles of range. We'll have more details as we get closer to that release date. And I hope we get more details on this because Toyota announces its BZ4X electric SUV in collaboration with Subaru. And the reason I want more details is because they gave us none no details besides what it looks like. I mean, if you told me that this was the next generation RAV4, I'd believe you, because that's it looks like a Toyota RAV4 mostly. It doesn't necessarily look like a out of the box concept electric vehicle. And when it came to like specs and all of that, they said, the people will determine what we put in this. So I guess it's coming to market next year. We'll see. And we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Hot News. If you're wondering about this set and why I'm on the road again, you can check out the video that we released yesterday regarding this entire trip and what's been going on in the life of Hot News Brett and all the craziness. See you tomorrow, friends. Cheers.